All right, I'd like to call the uh, Tampa's Lone Pack on meeting for January 18th, 2023 to order. I would ask that everyone please bow their head for a moment of silence. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the Canadian time and place of the meeting in accordance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975 by advertising a notice in the Star Ledger and the Express Times of Warren County Zone and by posting a copy on the bulletin board in the municipal building. Roll call, please. Councilman Delcaro. Here. Councilman McQuaid. Here. Councilman Polito. Here. Council President Wright. Here. Uh, yeah, please be advised the council met in executive session to discuss uh, privilege matters. Those matters were an attorney client privilege matter uh, for the court, personnel matter for health insurance, personnel matter for DPW clothing, personnel matter for open positions, employee coverage, personnel for Governor Murphy's new laws. Personnel matter for job applicants, job applicants, and a contractual matter uh, for a public relations consultant. Uh, no official action was taken. The minutes will be released at such time the council determines there's no harm to the public interest. Uh, one thing that's not on here. Do we have any comments on the agenda items only? Hearing and seeing none, we'll move into business. Number one is a resolution authorizing application to the Department of Community Affairs for the Recreation Improvement Grant. Uh, yeah, you'll see that in your package. Yep. Um, and the call will be applying to that. that. How much is that, Beth? Do we know? Rough well, topic. Um, I, I don't know if it's $100,000. Well, that's yes. all right. approximately 100000 Right, That's what I thought, but I didn't see it. So, okay. All right. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Councilman Yes. Councilman McQuaid. Yes. Councilman Polito. Yes. Mayor yes. Number two is a resolution to appoint Chapman Incorporated for the operation and maintenance of the township's wastewater and collection system. I'll uh, make that motion. Second. Councilman Delcaro. Yes. Councilman McQuaid. Yes. Councilman Polito. Yes. Mayor Mendicci. Yes. Well, one thing that's not on your agenda um, is to. The membership for number, fire company number two for a Joe Inamorado. I'll make that motion. Second. All, All in favor? All right. All right. Payment, Payment of bills. I'll make the motion. <coughs> Second. Okay. Councilman Belcaro. Yes. Councilman McQueen. Yes. Councilman Cito. Yes. And yes. Folks, questions, comments? Yes, sir. Bob Bruce, 11 Hallwich Road. I'm here uh, reading a statement on behalf of John Catcherson, who couldn't be here tonight. Yes. Uh, so I was asking about posting meeting videos on the site. <laughs> We've been hearing for many months that we'll pack on is going to start posting the videos of council meetings on the site, something that many towns already do. Today, there have been no videos posted. When I've needed to review meeting videos, I've had to put in an Oprah request, and it takes nearly two weeks to get the video. On multiple occasions, when I get the links, I don't have access rights to view the videos. When will OPACCOM be posting the meeting videos on the website? Good question. Someone files an Oprah request, I have seven days to give them you know, what they asked for. So it's seven days. And um, Mr. Ketcherson did try to do, uh, just, I did try to email him the DVD and it doesn't, he can't access it. So I have burned those DVDs. So he has everyone burned for him. Okay. Uh, again, that's not going to be an open request if you saw posting the meeting videos. Is, is, I mean, that's his question, basically. Okay? Yep. Uh, in the video of the July 15th meeting, Mr. Mayor, 
he says, you seem to be very frustrated that only 58 calls attending the meeting regarding the pool. Council discussed ways to reach out to Lopat citizens, and an idea was even floated to call each and every Lopat on household. There's a big difference between when the council wants public input and when they don't want public input. You've made no effort to get more public input when it comes to the destruction of our town by the proliferation of the warehouses that are going on. Black or white, you want public input on a pool. But the thing that people care about, as an aside regarding the pool, John says he agrees completely with Lou Belcaro that to pour millions of dollars into a new pool for the benefit of 60 families is ludicrous. Goes on to say, well, Pacon Park is looking pretty shabby. Softball feels that the quad overrun with weeds from lack of use. Crumbling roadways, and for quite some time, the park was being used to stage trucks. He compares Lil Pacon Park to Thomas Stewart Park, which I believe is in Greenwich. It has no pool or ball field, but is clean and well maintained, and attracts more people than he's ever seen at Lil Pacon Park. Goes on about email notifications. There's now a link, and he signed up for it in December to subscribe to all emails. He was hoping that would alleviate missing any special meetings, typically not on the schedule. He hasn't received any yet. Is that being used? Are emails being going out to the people that are subscribing to them? What what emails are you talking about? There's a link on a website, sir. Right. To subscribe. To whose emails? The township's emails. I get emails from a low hat, you know, into me from, you know, just a general. Right. Uh, but it's not signing up for receiving emails. It's asking, you know, it's receiving. All right. I believe I saw this. I can't attest to it, but I, I saw this. He saw this. There's a link. He signed up on, the, on your website. Selecting subscribe to all emails. Subscribe means you give me your email address and you send us emails. He hasn't received any. Sounds like it's up there and you don't know what's going on about it. Regarding the Eagle Lot, at the December 29th meeting, Bill Wright <coughs> mentioned that the Eagle Lot operator was fined $250 for operating an illegal truck stop and the trucks must be removed. What happens if they don't remove all the trucks? Do we now start fighting to get another $250 fine? Is that how we win that? $250 at a time? Last, at this December 29th, Bill Wright mentioned the council is considering a feasibility study to see if a road can be built from Strikers to 22 to intersect with Ram Boulevard. First class, it seems like I might alleviate some of the truck traffic associated with the three built or proposed warehouses. However, a quick look at Google Maps shows that such a road will go through the Christmas tree farm, one of the last remaining green undeveloped sections of Wapaka, or of 22. And it would have to cross the Lopacon Creek. According to your planner, George Wright, George Ritter, one of the reasons for developing the prime farmland behind the wall into a warehouse is in order to farm it right now, a roadway would need to be built over the Lopacon Creek. Why it is it okay to build a roadway over the Lopacon Creek that would carry hundreds of thousands of trucks? but not okay to build a roadway over to Pacon Creek to carry occasional farm vehicles. Thank you. Anyone else, questions, comments? Judy? Judy Liftak, 47 Kyle Drive. Um, leaving both the November and December council meeting, I was discouraged by the lack of professionalism and the respect this town um, exhibited. The meeting was grossly unprofessional. To lack the ability to engage in civil, truthful conversation without deception, 
screaming, having tantrums, and having self-controls disturbing, to say the least. Council's job is to represent the best interests of all citizens, not just a select few, and to conduct meetings in the open without deception and clouded realities. Our council and its professionals should ask themselves if the behaviors exhibited, the intimidation, the dishonesty, the tantrums, the yelling, the rude comments, and the refusal to engage in constructive conversation, the refusal to suddenly participate in professional question and answer dialogue, like a child's tantrum sticking their fingers in their ears, applying rules of decorum only to a select few of citizens while allowing others to, to act out is unacceptable. The classless and unprofessional behavior is troublesome. Furthermore, our mayor should denounce it, not encourage it. Members should reevaluate why they are on this council. If they cannot uphold their oath of office and follow basic principles of human respect, they should step down. Your behavior, including this lack of transparency, makes this town look like a dog and pony show, full of clowns with a puppet master in the ring running the show. I would like to clear up some misunderstandings, both our council and the members of the audience they brought with them on December. While listening to public statements made by the planted audience members, the council seems to lack some understanding of past statements I've made, so I hope to simplify them for you. First, after a year, it was nice to see more attendance and participation in the governance of our town, although most of the people were staged, as this is a very common union strategy for packing meetings. Unfortunately, in my opinion, our new audience members have been misinformed. I do not speak here against warehouses, commerce, job creation, or rateables. If this is what the perception, the perception is, you are sadly mistaken. So let me repeat that. I'm not up here to speak against warehouses, commerce, job creation, and rateables. I'm here to speak against the unprofessional way this council conducts itself. The outside influences this council, in my opinion, allow to dictate their decisions, the prolific overdevelopment of warehouses, the inability to see beyond just building warehouses. Yes, build. Please build. Build something that brings jobs, rateables, and a better way of life for our citizens. But stop heavy industrial businesses like asphalt and warehouses. Stop following the demands of the puppeteer and the gaggle of developers. We have enough warehouses. Additionally, I'm speaking against, in what my opinion, deceptive behavior to keep the public misinformed and chasing their tails for the truth. The misinformation, the hidden agendas, the denials, the lack of transparency and honesty, and the downright lack of integrity is what I'm speaking against. So when citizens ask to come to, when are asked to come to our meetings to speak up in favor of warehouses and jobs, I want to make sure everyone understands we're not here to take jobs away from anyone. Think about it. Warehouses aren't the only things that can be built. They're not the only jobs that can be created. The fact that we don't actively look to attract other, other businesses is the real problem. Why hasn't this at council actively sought out other types of businesses to build? Once where jobs are long-term, not short-term. We need smart growth that doesn't have the negative consequences that the prolific overdevelopment of warehouses brings. We should all wonder why that or what the underlying reason for warehouses is. What is that influence? Transparency. I hope 2023 brings more transparency. I would like this council to please discuss in detail what the next steps will be for implementing the redevelopment plans at the mall and the farmland. Up to this point, the council has not been forthcoming with information. So my hope is tonight they will shed some light on the situation, as well as give dates for the public hearing about the mall warehouse plans and the farm uh, land behind it. At the October meeting, there was a motion to hold the public hearing regarding the redevelopment plan. So Hak Tong is rolling along, but our council has not mentioned anything. We are having a hard time understanding why warehouses are suddenly in those plans when we were told from the beginning you couldn't build a warehouse there. Our redevelopment plan suddenly completed and ironically matched Pro Hakon's plans for warehouses. They were voted on by both the planning board and the council without any discussion. Just yes votes. When did the council discuss these plans? When did the planning board discuss them? 
behind closed doors. And there is no there is no public discussion, just votes. Your time's up. How is that Judy. being transparent? Time's up. I'm done. Thank you. Anyone else? Questions, comments? Donna. Um, Donna Schneider, 26 Meadowview. I just looked up the website um, about the email notifications. If you go under quick links, mm -hmm. there is a link that says email notifications. And when you click on that, it says, mm -hmm. if you would like to receive email notifications to stay informed on what is happening in LOPACON, please sign up below. And there's all these fields. And then it gives you choices of things that you want. Um, or, yeah, you can pick and choose what you want to sign up for. <laughs> but and again, I will ask whose emails. It's asking the township is asking you to put your email and your name in there, and the township will send you emails about things going on in the township. Oh, okay. So that's what's set up here. So if people are putting their name in there, nothing's probably happening <laughs> because yeah. So whoever set this up on the website needs to take it down or figure out a different. Maybe that was someone developed. Yeah, so yeah, that's not. <laughs> so that's up and running on your website. I just looked I just looked it up while I was sitting there. I think it's new. It has been there before, so it's not a legacy. Okay. Um the uh got some the agenda shows us for six thirty tonight and then um when you looked on the website tonight it showed six thirty and then if you look on the calendar part it shows 7:30. 7 7:30 is always our regular. Right. Like even this one shows 6:30. It's what was posted on the website. So I would, <laughs> let me just take that down back. We know what our, we know what our 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 it, sessions are. So rather than confuse the public just either put 7:30 up there or just yeah. What are you talking about our ad? She said we look, we look up the agenda it says 6:30 on it. And this one yeah, says 6:30 for executive yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's at yeah. 6.30. Okay. It didn't have the explanation. So I could see what that would be somewhat deceiving yeah. if you're looking at it. I, I just missed that. Yep. They usually have executive and then they go. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Um, um, I don't care if it was both of them. Yeah, yeah it usually does. Yeah, it usually does seven. Or, or, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, during Christmas, I noticed that the porta potties were back at the warehouse. Is that going to be in every uh, year where occurrence? Are this, where are they this time? They were all same throughout spot? Christmas, the same spot. And from now that Barry this time, they're in the mail facility um, in oh, the front. Here, I, I thought they were moved because I... I now they are because Christmas is over. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, so you're asking if that's just going to be a Christmas thing? Yeah, or are we going to have to... that meeting that night I wrote out there, and they were, they were, I think there was two of them. Yeah, there were two of them out, out there, and they put them out right before Christmas when the rush starts after Thanksgiving or right before Thanksgiving, I and then they're taken away. I think that may be just away. coincidental because we had told Paula to please look into that and get it moved. So okay. you may be right, but I think it's just coincidental. Okay. Yeah, it's just weird that they're that they're there um, when they have That's running right. water. Yeah. <laughs> um, is Chapman for um, our little... For, our, for 57 for our, and our little facilities. Our okay. Store, yeah. yeah, I just yep. was wondering what that meant by, yep. by that. Um, I guess the truck thing is, uh, uh, you know, as they said, the truck thing is now it's even more. I go to Twilight. There were eight trucks there the other day. I mean, it just never ends. And these, the $250 fine is probably a laugh to them because they're probably making hand over fist of money. So 250 bucks is. Well, my guess will also be that they'd appeal whatever it's on. It just seems to be the natural process. The only thing I will tell you, um, I did have a meeting today with the other mayors in the county, um, along with the freeholder. Um, Assemblyman DeMeo was there. So uh, I can't tell you any more than that, uh, but we are looking for a county designated truck route um, to get the trucks as quickly as possible to state and federal roads. Okay. So that's what's at this point. It's not going to run through a little pack on you. <laughs> Uh, that's where it's at at this point. I'd like to be able to give you more information, but I really don't know much more than that at this point. Okay. Um, yeah, and also with the mail sorting facility, there's garbage all over again. There's more pee bottles. It just keeps getting – nothing just seems to be getting better over there. So it's really just disheartening to constantly see it. And 
I guess there's not many people now on shade tree, so there's not any more cleanups. It was just the one that we did, and it just keeps getting worse. So um, it's kind of gross. <laughs> well, again, people are throwing litter everywhere. Yeah, I'm not, I, I, and trust me when I tell you, I'm not defending the truckers. Right up and down any road. Of it's course. Disgusting. But it's never, we've never had pee bottles on Strikers that Road. That be <laughs> something new, but garbage, it, it's. Of course, there's always garbage. It's just it's in excess now because of that yeah, on Strikers Road. Yeah, people have people have. We have an ordinance for no littering. We have an ordinance for a lot of things that people don't follow, like illegal truck stops, because, and they just do it yeah, anyway. And you're not going to win with that because if it goes to court, they're going to entertain that. Yeah. So it's, I, I that's where we are today. Yeah, it's just a shame that it continues. And, it's, and this is just my opinion that we have multiple bottle holders in our cars. All of us do. To throw a plastic bottle out, I just, I, I can't fathom it. Plastic bottle is one thing with urine in it. No, no, I Only one person is doing that. Garbage truckers. in general along the road. Yeah. Base. And I get bottles on my property on Belvedere Road. Yeah. And there's I, trash on There are trash, but this is not from that. This is from the truck drivers. I've actually seen them throw things out the windows. There's cups and fast food wrappers all over it. That is not coming from the residents of the township. It's just it's not. Not all of it. I can't say it's all them, but the majority of it is coming from that warehouse. Right. So it really is. Well, it's it's just, just terrible. The trash is trash and people are throwing trash as you drive by. Well, this is your town too. I mean, you, wouldn't you, I would hope that you'd be more concerned about it and maybe you know, do something a little bit better than what is going on and do something with that warehouse to make them adhere to something that they never seem to do. Porta potties, trash, it's going in and out the wrong way. So. All right. Listen, uh, it, it's hard to police every single person. Of course it is. You know, to what they do. Of course right. it is. No, thank you. Yep, thank you. Anyone else? Questions, comments? Hey. Patty Lonenbach, 919 Barnell Way. Good evening. Um, I had asked two months ago for our attorney to get me information on the court case because I said, where are we um, with the, the lawsuit? And he said, give me the email and I'll tell you where we stand. Which court case are you referring to? The one, NF5, the three of them okay. are, are, are suing us because they said... Um, they should be able to build warehouses on Trigger. We have an ordinance, and they want us to get rid of our ordinance. So I just want to know, because we were supposed to, I mean, it's public knowledge on the Internet that we were supposed to have certain discoveries by October, and I'm just wondering if we're meeting those and if the court case is progressing. Yeah, so, I'll talk to you. I'm covering for my slavery, so I'll reach out to him. What's, your, what's the email that you were supposed to email to? I'll, I'll, make sure. I'll let you know afterwards. All right. Um, and then I, I do have to ask... Um, because one of the suits is, I believe, that the ordinance is not aligned with our master plan. And I just, it just seems like the master plan should have been updated before we tried to put an ordinance in place. That just seems like logical to me. And maybe I don't understand how things work, but if they think they have a lawsuit, that ordinances should follow the master plan. Can you tell me why the master plan wasn't updated before we attempted to put an ordinance in place? The master plan goes all the way back to the 1950s. But they can be updated. And they have been, you know, yeah. and they're required by law to be updated. Yeah. So I guess my next question then is, are we looking to update our master plan so that our ordinance against warehouses will, will align with it? That well, seems like a logical step to make as well. Just because there's a lawsuit doesn't mean they're correct, that it's not aligned with the master plan. So they could just be trying to defeat any ordinance, but we can look into it and then let you know. Okay. <laughs> I'll that's come back and ask this question again. Okay. And then in my last couple of minutes, I just, I got a new puppy. And I wanted to license this puppy at six months of age because that's the requirement. Now, every single puppy they give a one-year vaccination to. The reason for this is because the immune system will not hold it for three years. And when they give the second one, it holds it for three years. So the problem is I just got the vaccination. I got the vaccination four months ago, so it expires in September. 
And now I can't get a license because my vaccination on my puppy expires in September and not November. So I'm forced to revaccinate my puppy after four months. And I think that's wrong. And no, you're not, because I told you you can get a letter of exemption from your veterinarian. The state law is the license has to be current by November 1st. So if it expires before that, you have your choice to go get your dog vaccinated. But if you have a dog that's just a puppy, the veterinarian, and we get them all the time, they write exemption letters, and that is acceptable to the state and therefore we can give the license, but you have to put that on the record. It's a state law. Yes. Uh, I did not realize that. I thought it was a local no, law. We don't oh. Okay. Never mind then. Thank you very much for your time. All right, no problem. Thank you. Anyone else? Questions, comments? Hearing and seeing none. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Oops, thanks for coming out. Thank you.